Hello friends, welcome back to the shop and to this restoration series on this uh, beautiful Ben Wade pipe. So this episode is going to be a little bit different than normal. Uh, I'm going to do mostly lathe work here and unfortunately the audio just did not work out well for the lathe. So I'm going to attempt to do a video voiceover and I hope you enjoy seeing the process. So we're beginning with an overhead shot of the lathe here and uh, what you can see is I've got uh, a tool set up in the tool holder that's a point tool and we're going to be putting uh, some uh, Delrin stock into the into the chuck here and that's what you see right now that is uh, I believe a 3 uh, Delrin it's actually the same size as the the hole that we're going to drill for the tenon which is very convenient so we're bringing that in really close to the chuck because we want to avoid any flex on the Delrin and we'll bring the tool over and now what we're going to do is face that off so the, the, the face of the Delrin is going to be square to the side of the Delrin. Alright, I apologize for the shaking. Uh, it's where the camera's mounted. The lathe isn't moving at all. It's the, the camera mount is, is shaking. Uh, so that'll look like the lathe's sh shaking around, but it's really quite solid. So the next thing to do is going to be to drill the, the, the Delrin insert. We're going to put a 1 8 inch hole through the center of it, and that's going to provide the airway through the tenon. And to do that we first want to use a center drill. The center drills are really important because they help you get purchase on that uh, surface and, and really directly center it whereas a drill bit would kind of wander around a bit. And this is a fairly large hole so we're not too worried about the size, you know, how deep we go. We're actually going to wind up chamfering this end anyway. And what I'm probably doing now is measuring the the drill bit to make sure that I go deep enough, but it turns so the the eighth inch drill bit is not long enough to get all the way through the tenon, and that's why I eventually will have to turn it around and drill from the other side. No lubrication necessary. Delwin machines very, very easily. Uh, you can see the the uh, chips are just curling out of there in a nice ribbon, and you know it's a nice sharp drill bit. It's one recommendation I've got. Oh, it uh, seems to have caught up in there. That's what happens when you try to drill too deep. Uh, but it's it's Delrin. It'll it'll release with no problem. So we'll get that out. There we go. And I'm probably not going to drill any deeper because of uh, that issue. Yeah, good sharp drill bits. Uh, buy buy them in bulk you know I normally when I buy like an eighth inch drill bit I'll buy 10 or 20 of them at a time they're not that expensive and they're extremely critical to this kind of work so now we're extending this out and this is just to mark uh, the length of the the tenon portion of our insert so that's what we're marking right now and I'm just gonna put a sharpie mark on it and then I'll cut into that sharpie mark more exact length. So I'm setting the calipers to the the length of the tenon, which if I recall was one inch. And we'll just briefly turn the lathe on and let the calipers cut into that sharpie line. And that gives us a nice sharp mark that we can line up the, the cutting tool on. Again, bring it as close to the chuck as possible to avoid flex in the Delrin. And then we bring in the cutting tool and we've got to line it up with that mark. And then move over the, uh, the carriage stop. 
and I'll, I'll tighten down the carriage stop. And the carriage stop does not actually stop the carriage. It's, it's a mechanical block there, so if you hit it, you're in trouble. But it's a visual guide to uh, how close you're getting. And sometimes the chips can obscure where you are on the, the piece of work. So it's important to have that carriage stop in place. This is a live center that I made actually out of a woodworking uh, live center. But I made this eighth inch uh, extension for that that will fit into that eighth inch hole we just drilled. And the reason for that is Delrin does flex and we want to make sure that we're getting a nice straight uh, tenon. So this is just sort of some extra insurance. We'll drive that eighth inch rod into the hole that we drilled previously and that'll prevent it from moving from side to side as we cut. touch off right up against the material and then take off uh, just ten thousandths as a first cut and typically I'll do this if it if it's a material like acrylic or ebonite I'll do this and then measure again And apparently I'm going to be careful and measure again. <laughs> it's funny watching this weeks later and doing a voiceover. I don't remember what I was doing here. very important that you keep measuring and once you get close you, you check the fit because it's a matter of you know thousands of an inch to get a good fit for the tenon so we're going to go ahead and test fit the the pipe and that's actually a very good fit on the first shot so I'm happy about that Looking at the spacing, it might there might be a little bit of a gap there, but we can fix that just by trimming a bit off the end. So the next step is going to be to prepare that that end. I'm going to put a. Um, a chamfer on that again I'm just checking to see if there's a gap there between the very end of the tenon that would ultimately lead to a gap between the stem and the shank and we're going to trim a little bit off first just to try to compensate for that and close that gap in other words the tenon was a little bit too long Better to make it too long than too short, I suppose. Now I'm going to use the other side of the tool running the lathe backwards, and I'm just going to put a tiny little chamfer, really more deburring than anything. And it looks like that's fitting uh, perfectly with no gap, so I'm happy about that. Got to be real careful to move that stuff out of the way before you pull the pipe off. And also, I should have removed the tool. I've more than once uh, backed my hand into that tool, and it's very sharp. You can't check it too often. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to be taking care of the... Uh, the business end of the tenon. We're going to put an internal chamfer on that using this uh, countersinking tool. 
And this is important. I, I really think this chamfer is very important for uh, smoking quality, the, the, the smoke flow through the, the, uh, the pipe. It just provides a nice, clean, smooth transition between the shank and the stem. Okay, so, so this is the, the tenon, what you're going to see on the stem, what's going to be exposed. The next step is going to be to create the part that's going to go into the stem, the, the insert portion of that. So I'm again going to repeat that measurement procedure and measure off the distance, which I believe was 400,000. Uh, I apologize, I do not have the measurements in front of me as I'm rewatching this video. And again, just use the Sharpie mark so that we can see it and put a little scratch in there so that we can line up. And now, because we, we used a piece of Delrin that was three-eighths of an inch and that's how deep how uh, the diameter that we're going to use when we drill the hole into the stem to accept the insert we don't actually have to machine the delrin any further but I do like to put uh, a couple of sort of notches uh, serrations into the delrin to help hold onto the epoxy so this is a parting tool I'll put those uh, serrations in and then I will part it off at that mark that we established I like to have the stop in place uh, when I part off. It just provides some additional rigidity. Now we're just checking that the parting tool is lined up on center, a little bit below center actually. And you can tell I'm, I'm eyeballing a lot of this. I really should have made sure that the parting tool was exactly 90 degrees to the work. And here we're just going to plunge in a little bit and then move over and plunge in a little bit more. And this is just cutting little channels that the epoxy will bind to. Delrin's a very slick material and the epoxy doesn't like to stick to it. So this helps make sure that tenon is never going to come out. And now we're right up against the stop and we can just plunge through. And we're lucky. Normally the part falls right into that hole there. Uh, so, so what I've done here is I've turned the tenon around and I'm just removing the little nib that is left by the parting tool uh, to get a clean surface so that we'll be able to countersink that and drill the hole from the other side, from the insert side of the tenon. Here we come in with the countersink, center drill, I should say. And we'll once again use that 1 8 inch drill bit, and this will just go all the way through. It should only be a short distance before it breaks through. Alright, so now what we're doing is we're just testing, you can see it goes straight through with no issue, 
and the tenon is now essentially done. But I do like to put a chamfer on this end. The reason being is that that tenon should line up with the airway very well. But just to be safe, we put a little chamfer on there, and that's going to help both with the airflow as well as make sure that the pipe cleaner can pass easily. And that's about it. I mean, we've got to remove the sharpie mark. We might have to do a little bit of sanding uh, to get it to fit, but basically the tenon is done. So the next thing to do is to get a three inch blank of, of uh, that amber acrylic and we'll start making the stem blank. Now, this is a little oversized. We're gonna take it off uh, on both ends in order to make sure that it's square. I'm being careful here not to stick it right up against the back of the chuck because I know it's not square. But the chuck should center that properly based on the jaws. And there we, we face that end off now. I'm going to use this little machinist square just to check it looks pretty good. So now we can put that uh, that square edge back against the back wall of the chuck and that will help line everything up. And now we do the same. Seems good. We're going to check that against the machine to square. Looks pretty good. Now the next step is something that's kind of optional, but I really like to do this. It helps a lot. I'm going to polish both ends. And I do this with increasing grits of sandpaper and then some leather that's been charged with polishing compound. I do this because I want to have these polished ends to mark off on the end where I'm going to cut the slot and on the other end that surface is going to be seen when you take the stem out and this is really the only opportunity to polish that just takes a few seconds to do it but you can see that's basically a finished polished surface and now we'll do the other end okay now we can start drilling the blank we're going to begin by drilling the slot end so this is the end where the button or mouthpiece is going to be so we're using a 1 16th inch drill bit to drill the the hole on this end we want to drill it about one inch deep so we'll get the carriage out of the way So we're using a small center drill, it's a 3 64ths. And we're just going to put that in a tiny bit, uh, just enough to make a little divot for the 16th inch drill bit. We don't want to make this too wide because this hole is actually going to be our slot, or our slot's going to be centered on this hole. If it's too wide, it's going to create a little uh, inflection in the slot and we don't want that. Okay. 
I'm now explaining what I just said. I basically just poked it. That was me talking about the inflection. So this, this is going to be drilled about an inch. It's very important to get this drill bit centered in the jaws. It's surprising how easy it is to have that off to one side in, in the little three jaw uh, chuck. Now, as we're drilling acrylic, we're going to use some lubrication on the, on the tools. This is a 50-50 solution of dish detergent, Dawn dish detergent, and water. And I only use this on acrylic, but it really does help uh, with the drilling. And drilling acrylic is a game of low speed and short distances. So I'll only go in a few turns, clear off the chips, add some more lubricant, few more turns it's tempting sometimes to go just that little bit further but believe me you do not want the acrylic to melt around your drill bit and seize onto it you'll never get that drill bit out and then you're just gonna have to throw the whole thing away And that's far enough in. We're, we're shooting for about an inch. It's not critical because we're going to meet that hole from the other end. Yeah, so here I'm talking about the fact that you don't want the acrylic to, to heat up and melt around the drill bit and hold it. Uh, so low speeds, I'm cutting uh, around 400 RPM and tiny, tiny distances of drilling. So now we're going to drill from the other end, and this is the end where the tenon is going to be going in. So we can use a larger center drill, and you know we're not we're not being as careful here about making sure that that hole is exactly one sixteenth. Uh, it's actually going to be quite a bit bigger than one sixteenth. And this is really the beginning of the airway um, that will ultimately meet up with that 1 16th inch hole that we drilled on the other side. So we'll start with the center drill. This is a 5 64ths. And you can see I'm, I'm going in quite deep because it really doesn't matter and I want to have a good center hole. And next, we're, we're going to start with that eighth inch drill bit again, um, just to provide a pilot hole. Lubricate. And we're going to just com continue to repeat that process. Drill in a few turns, pull out, clear the chips, lubricate, and over and over until we get to the depth we want. All right, so now we've got the pilot hole drilled. Now I'm explaining that we're going to be putting a 3 8 inch hole in there at the end that will hold the tenon. However, the next step is going to be to use a tapered drill bit and these are from Vermont Freehand. I know that I'm not going to have to go much beyond where the, the jaws of the chuck are. I should meet that inch deep hole that I drilled on the other side. So I'm just going to put a little bit of tape on there as a marker. And you do feel it when it meets up, but just to be absolutely sure I don't go too deep. 
I like to put the piece of tape on there. So that tapers to a point. And it flares out to five thirty seconds of an inch. Um, <laughs> and again, we're going to just do small steps, low speed, around 400 RPM, and lubricate after every uh, drill. Again, you can feel it meet up on the other side, but so this is a long 1 16th inch bit. And the nice thing about this is it's flexible. It will center on that tapered end of what we just drilled. And if we're through, it'll just slide through. If we got to give it a few turns to break through on the other side, that's fine. And then we could just slide all the way through and make sure that we've got a complete open airway all the way through the blank and that's how you drill yourself an airway so I'm pointing out the bits are very expensive so I always keep that cap on to protect the tip if you drop that once on the tip it's it's gone so next we need to put a mortise into the stem to accept that tenon insert. And what we're going to use for that is a 3 8 inch Faulkner bit. So the nice thing about the Faulkner bit is it provides a nice flat bottom hole and that's what we'd really like for the tenon. So we don't need lubrication for this, uh, we just have to take our time. A sharp Faustner bit is really good at clearing chips, so there's just no issue uh, as there is with the smaller bits. And that ought to do it. The insert fits. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna push it all the way in, but because it, it's a tight fit, it'll be very difficult to get back out. And that's about it for the airway. Now the, the last step that we're going to do here on the lathe is we're going to want to decrease the outer diameter to more closely match the shank. We're not going to get perfect, but we can get close. Now I'm using the silver band here as an approximate measure of what the shank diameter is going to be. Five nineteen, five twenty. So I know I don't want to go smaller than five twenty. You got to be careful here because the silver, of course, will flex as you're trying to measure it. Here I'm just pointing out that if the silver band fits, the stem band should fit because they line up perfectly. But uh, we shall see. So 
So I'm writing down 520 now because I will forget. We haven't really talked about the design of the stem, but this is an old style stem, just a round hole in the end. We're going to modernize this a bit, put a little flare out in, into the, the button and uh, thin it out quite a bit. So if we cut down to about this point, we'll have the remainder for flaring out that button area. that first cut and that's smoothed out the surface for us so we can get a, a good measure. The surface of the acrylic is relatively rough and rippled uh, when you get it from the manufacturer so taking that first cut means we're going to get a very accurate measurement here. So this is measuring out to be 790 thousandths and we want to go down to 520 thousandths. Now I'm doing math and I've decided that if we take off 200 that will bring us to 590 so that will be a safe place to go. And here I've realized that uh, this is just going to be a lot of what you've already seen, just me cutting this down until it gets to be about 520. So I'm going to cut the lathe video here and return back to uh, normal uh, video. Okay, I brought us back here once I finished uh, decreasing the diameter here. We're pretty close. Um, I was using this to kind of guess, uh, which of course is the part that fits over the shank here because I can't use this. Uh, but I noticed that this was actually a little rolled over on the end here, and if I put it on this way, um, we get pretty darn close. You can see it's uh, maybe just about an eighth of an inch sticking out there. I could easily heat fit this uh, without any, any issue. So I'm going to stop there. I mean, I could always sand this down a bit if, if need be. And we're pretty much set with the stem. You know, we've got the we've got the insert here. I'm not going to push it all the way in. This fits well into the into the pipe, so that's good. Uh, we got the cracks repaired, the crack repaired. This uh, is going to be my next focus. So I want to get this off of the amber and shaped a little bit better because you can see it's kind of. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's gotten kind of bent up, the, the wings here. So we'll get those smoothed out a little, and then get that fit onto the end here. It goes on like this. And once that's done, this part of the stem is finished, and everything we need to do is, is from here down, uh, in terms of shaping the stem. So we're in, we're in real good shape right now. I'm going to actually... Uh, close this video at this point and when we come back I'll work on trying to get this out and I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna do that yet so I gotta give it some thought. Uh, the first thing I try is probably gonna be heat but uh, that may or may not work. Alright folks well thank you very much for watching this I hope you found the video interesting if you did enjoy it please hit the subscribe button so that you can get notified when future videos post and other videos like this because I, I do a lot of these shop videos. Uh, if you liked it, hit that thumbs up button. It really does help us out. And that's it, guys. I'll see you next time.